Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to NTV at One. My name is Malcolm Simir. Let's go straight to the headlines this hour. Trade unionists are demanding the sale of Meme shares to recover public money. Also coming up, the U.S. has carried out a military operation against Al-Shabaab in Somalia. And nationals are also returning home in the town of Bulumari after Amsom troops flashed out the rebels. TV at one and once again members of the central organization of free trade unions are calling on the parliamentary select committee investigating the alleged mismanagement of money in the national social security fund to sell the member shares that the fund managers bought in may this year in order to recover workers money the members made the demand while meeting the select committee members in parliament this morning the position is workers' money has to be recovered. We cannot let that thing pass like that. Money was, was invested. We, we have even noticed that all the NSSF investments are not doing well at all. So the fact that the, the, they have invested this money, us as workers, we want this money to be recovered and workers' money be put back. They should be sold at a competitive value and the money is recovered. Have arrested the man in connection with the theft of 238 million shillings through an online scam. Timothy Ahim Siwe was arrested after a woman he allegedly defrauded reported the matter to the police. Ahim Siwe is also reported to have been uh, holding workshops in different parts of Kampala to train people about online deals. We, we are holding a man, a suspect called Ahim Siwe Timothy. He's a businessman, a resident of Nalia. He's about 38 years. Uh, Why we are holding him, he defrauded a lady called Chisache Mary Gladys of uh, 238 million. Ayimbsibwe has been moving around, organizing workshops where he preaches the gospel to them of e-money and how they can benefit and profit from the business of e-money. So he convinced this lady to deposit 238 million in his account, that the lady will be getting 600, I mean 62 million per month as a profit. She has been wa waiting. She deposited the money on 6th of March, and up to now, she has not received any coin. Our investigations show that when she deposited this money on the 6th of March, the money was withdrawn on the 7th of March. We are calling upon members of the public who have also been defrauded by this man to come up and uh, to come and register a case or report a case to us. We are going to charge him with the three counts. One, electronic fraud, two, obtaining money by false pretense, and three, conspiracy to commit a felony. The trouble with dealing with virtual offices, that's online platforms. Moving on, the census kicked off on the 28th August this, uh, with the Uganda Bureau of Statistics saying this would help the government to plan for service delivery in many sectors. Over 80,000 enumerators were hired to count the people and collect information that would help UBOS determine the population of Uganda right now. And uh, let's, we're now joined by Godfrey Nabongo, who is in charge of uh, the census publicity and advocacy. You're very welcome. Okay. Once again, you're, you're back here. And I've okay. also had you on uh, different uh, mediums this morning, sure. uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, d defend uh, your glitches in the exercise. And apparently what we would start with, you have withdrawn, according to you, some people 
who were misbehaving. Yeah, what happens is in case somebody is found not to be doing the right thing, mm. definitely to withdraw. Mm. Uh, we, we know the case where somebody was not doing the correct, uh, the correct job, for instance, they would ask questions, mm. leave out some. And we say that. And, and then you also talked about, actually, you talked about uh, those that, uh, uh, whose handwriting is very poor. Uh, yes. I mean, how could those people then make it to the exercise? How could they be recruited? And isn't that going to cost uh, the uh, Ghana National Bureau of Standards? Because statistics. now you have to pay others to, you know, uh, rather statistics, to pay others to, to join in. And then uh, how are you going to uh, work on that? No, the good thing is that when we're training, we train reserves. Mm. And you know, at that moment in training, somebody's trying to be very careful. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to work, you're alone. Chances are that the better part of you will come out. Mm -hmm. And I think for s some of those few cases, there are not quite many though, mm -hmm. but normally, even if it is one person, it is a concern. Mm -hmm. So those few cases that came out, we definitely have to handle them okay. that way. All so right, they can get rid of you. Okay, so give us, give us an update now, six days into the census. Yeah, six days into the census, uh, the census enumeration, Apparently, the momentum has peaked. It is higher. Mm. Uh, the public is a lot more interested. We've started receiving many calls. We haven't been enumerated. We want to be enumerated, which is a very, very good sign of uh, um, responsibility mm. by the people of Uganda. Mm. That includes uh, Ugandans alike and the non-Ugandans who reside in Uganda. Mm. And uh, we've already started reducing some enumerators who have been able to complete their areas. And uh, they are all being deployed to support those whose areas are still big. So I think we're progressing very well. Mm. Uh, the rains are still on in some areas, especially the areas of uh, the Elgon area. Uh, it is still a bit bad, but uh, still the inmates are trying their best. Mm. Yeah, regardless of the rain, and I think we're on course to complete. Yeah, uh, how is the rain affecting? Uh, because I've also seen some of your enumerators here. They have just umbrellas and bags. And, you know, the other day we saw a pickup being pushed. The roads are bad. I mean, how are you coping with such challenges? Uh, yeah, that is, that is what's happening. Actually, even in Kampala, mm. uh, last evening I was with some chairpersons of certain LCs. Yeah, they said enumerators treat their homes because of the rain. The place, mm. places are flooded and they're improvising. Uh, some have gone to the extent of securing even gumboots for some enumerators mm. to reach some of the households. Mm. So it is everybody is picked interest and everybody is in to make sure that it is completed well. Okay. Uh, in terms of coping, yes, the local leaders are doing their best to make sure right, that. But then the others are, are complaining that they have not seen any meritors. How does that? Happen? Yeah, it it happens. Some meritors we have ten days. Meritors may not reach everybody at the same time. For instance, I'll tell you that personally, I was meritors only yesterday. Uh, on the day number five, others I hadn't seen any meritor in my home before that. So, yes, that is true. But they'll come and they are coming. I haven't seen them either. I don't know how they look like. The emulators? Well, just be home tomorrow. They'll come. Somebody so will come. There's an assurance that there have been some cults of people who are opposed, according to their beliefs, uh, to being counted. How are you coping with that? Yeah, we've continued. Every time we're told that there's this group here, we send people to go and talk to them mm. uh, politely. And uh, the challenge has been that their leaders have persisted, mm. telling them don't. Uh, maybe run away, go hide, and whatever, mm. and telling them don't have to be counted. But through persuasion, a number have agreed to be enumerated. Mm. And uh, on the contrary, it is more of the leaders now who are being hunted down for sabotaging a program. Mm. And uh, in that case, it is the law enforcement uh, who are uh, looking up these people for sabotaging a government program. Mm. Others, on our part, we are continuing to educate them and uh, knowing that within the 10 days we should have completed. Mm. Definitely when it comes to two days to the end of enumeration and some of them are still obstinate, uh, the plan B is have them arrested, count them where you'll have arrested. Tell them. us about the exercise. Um, what are you doing uh, for, um, you know, to count Ugandans in the diaspora? No, we're not counting Ugandans in the diaspora. Mm. They didn't sp if they didn't spend the night in Uganda on 27th, then we are not counting. You're so saying them. someone should fly in if they want to be uh, counted. Why don't you ins ins instruct, for example, embassies to carry out the exercise? The census isn't that being unfair. No, no. The census is not about counting Ugandans. Mm. It's about counting people in Uganda. It is not counting Ugandans. Counting people in Uganda. But if you don't plan for that Ugandans that that and you say you're just counting people in the country, you have to count for those who could come tomorrow, for example. No, the, the what? Yeah, that's because they have the right to come back home. 
that's why what happens is that when you're counting the people in Uganda, we count even the visitors mm -hmm. who will have to go away. When they go away, those come, coming back will have been provided for. Mm -hmm. All right then. So uh, LC is refusing to help out because they have not been given their allowances. What is your take on that? And what is the... Yeah. Yeah, it, it has been again more of simply sharing information. All they most of this what they need is just guarantee that they're getting the money. Mm. I know, for instance, in KCCA, the area, the area where the KCCA is involved, mm. it has been a simple issue of submit your bank accounts, and many of them thought maybe they they needed to wait. But as we talk now, most of them have submitted accounts, mm. and uh, all the numerators, because they submitted earlier, and most of the leaders who submitted earlier, their money was sent to their accounts yesterday. So the few who haven't. What was still Are you talking about all the money or just... No, they were given the advance and they'll get the other money through the same system, through the bank accounts. That's KCCA. Elsewhere, the arrangement was they should be paid uh, their money. Mm -hmm. But the guides, these are the local council leaders, mm -hmm. they're supposed to receive this money on completion of the activity. However, for them to do part of the job, they're being paid some advance to that effect. How much? Well, 20, and then they get the 20 after. That's why it was better they could wait to get the money after completing the responsibility of guiding the people. Isn't that little? It it's it's just 20,000, some 50 year old. Oh, the, the, these, are family. these are leaders, and this is just a token of appreciation for you to show the guide around to say this is the person enumerating you. And, and you when do we expect the results, Mr. Nabongo? October, we have the first results. The initial results of October, the counts of the population will be mm. released. Thank you very much, Godfrey Nabongo is uh, the publicity uh, person in charge of publicity mm -hmm. uh, for the census and is from the Uganda Bureau of uh, Statistics. Let us move on now. The Kampala Central Division and um, the executives there have said they will take Kampala Capital City Authority to court. Godfrey Nyakana said that for the last three years they have not delivered to the people who elected them their positions as their powers who are usurped by KCCA. Yakana also uh, on the other li on the list of those who uh, are to be taken to court, uh, KCC he says those on the list, I beg your pardon, to be taken to court are KCCA's executive director and the minister for Kampala, Frank Tumwebazi. Uh, we uh, found it necessary to uh, call and inform that the divisions are not functional, neither is the institution called KCCA functional. We don't know which money uh, Jennifer is using. We don't know how much she's collecting. We don't know against which financial year. For, because in systems, every financial year is independent. And uh, it gets a budget, and people account for that budget at the end of it. And we will also have what we call a budget performance. But for the last three years, Zero. We ask for accountability from a town clerk. She's not functional. She's just a clerk. All she does is run back and forth with papers. That's it. She does not have a budget. We do not have a budget. So uh, I, I really strongly think that uh, the resolution made by my council uh, that we take KCA to court to appreciate what is in the law, the KCA Act, to appreciate what is in the national constitution, the devolution is a right. The problem we are facing is that we are elected by the people and we are answerable to the people. An amount of money that is collected from the people that must be accounted for. Therefore, it is have to use this opportunity now to demand for this accountability. We're now going to take a short break. Then TV at one comes back with many more stories. But just before we go, maybe the Somali National Army and the African Union mission in Somalia have captured the city of Bulo, Maria, uh, which was formerly under the control of the Al-Shabaab and assured its residents to return as peace had been restored. Residents have returned to the town of Bulo, Maria following its capture from the Al-Shabaab by joint forces of the Somali National Army and the African Union mission in Somalia, Amizom. Bulo Maler, located 115 kilometers southwest of Mogadishu, has been under Al-Shabaab for years and is a gateway to the port city of Barawe. It was also used by Al-Shabaab for recruitment and tax collection. The residents who had earlier fled to the town as fighting took place returned 
after it was captured from the insurgents. The Lower Shabelle governor, Abdul Kadir JSCD, and Amizom Uganda contingent commander Brigadier General Dick Olum convened the residents and addressed them, focusing on sensitization on the exploitation they are suffering under Al Shabab. <laughs> Even if it's Al-Shabaab, let him come back, but give us the guns. Even these same people, if we want information about who is Al-Shabaab, where he is, you people will tell us, we know that, you'll tell us who is Al-Shabaab and who has the gun. We're now going to take a short break on TV at 1 comes back with many more stories that are making headlines this afternoon. White Star Laundry Bus Soap with a lemon fragrance and you'll have a fresh, clean day. Be like a star. Use White Star. White Star Laundry Bus Soap. All day fresh, clean. Stand up to be counted. Brought to you by UBOS. It's your right. Windows? As if you don't know. Don't you see those people coming? They have been asking every one question in the village. I don't want to give them any information about us. You can't trust people nowadays. We need to answer them. Why? They are collecting information that will help our community in the end. The information collected is used by our leaders to make informed decisions and plan better for all of us. Census is here. Get ready to be counted. Starting from 28th August to 6th September 2014. Together, we count. This message is brought to you by Uganda Bureau of Statistics. On the next episode brought to you by At Orange, we know you want to do more on the internet. That's why we bring you happy hour, day and night. I wanted to see you. I hadn't seen you in a long time, so... Are you nuts? You shouldn't have come here. Can't you see it's dangerous? Come on. Tell me the truth. Don't you miss me? Tell me. No, they're not here. I am alone at home. Veronica, don't do anything crazy. Veronica. 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 You can download movies at the lowest prices and never fast from Orange. Dial star 133 hash to buy a data bundle. Happy hour changes with Orange. Today changes with Orange. Welcome back to NTV at 1. A look at uh, what's happening across the borders. Pentagon Press Secretary uh, John Kibi says the U.S. military forces have carried out an operation against Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Shabaab fighters in Somalia. The U.S. military assistance comes as Somali's army and African Union troops are continuing a major offensive against the armed fighters. According to Al Jazeera reports in the north of the country, security forces say they have captured districts in the Hiran region without a single shot being fired. Government forces are also eyeing to capture the seaside port of Barawi, Al-Shabaab's official headquarters south of Mogadishu. Yesterday, Al-Shabaab fighters carried out a car bomb and gun attack against an intelligence headquarters in central Mogadishu, leaving at least seven fighters and five others dead. Al-Shabaab fighters have targeted key areas of the Somali government or the security forces in an apparent bid to discredit claims by the authorities who are backed by the African Union's 22,000-strong armed force that they are winning the war against the armed group. 
The armed group is fighting to topple Somali's international backed government and regularly launch attacks against state targets as well as in neighboring countries that contribute to the AU force. And the political crisis in Pakistan has taken another violent turn as anti-government protesters stormed the state broadcaster's building in the capital and police fired tear gas at those gathered outside the parliament before calm returned by nightfall. The protesters also occupied advanced positions near the Prime Minister's official residence. Following Mandi's attack, the government has filed paperwork asking for a legal case to be filed against Kadri, Khan and hundreds of their supporters under anti-terrorism laws for inciting their supporters to invade government buildings. Khan and Kadri have since distanced themselves from the attack on PTV, calling on supporters not to enter government buildings. Canada alleges sheriff's parties rigged the 2013 general election that swept sheriff to power and wants fresh elections, while Kadri has called for the overthrow of the government and its replacement by a national government that would rewrite the constitution. And elsewhere, Ukraine's military has pulled its forces back from defending a vital airport in the east against what it described as a column of Russian tanks as President Petro Poroshenko accused Moscow of direct and open aggression. The withdrawal from the civilian airport outside the city of Luhansk was the latest in a string of reverses for Ukrainian forces fighting pro-Russian separatists who Kiev says have the direct support of hundreds of Russian troops and armor. An army statement yesterday said Ukrainian paratroopers were engaging a Russian tank battalion near the airport. Later, Andriy Leysenko, a military spokesperson, said in a Luhansk direction, Ukrainian forces have received an order and have pulled back from the airport. A look at sports now. Man United dominated Europe's transfer activity as the transfer deadline window slammed shut yesterday evening with Louis van Gaal taking his summer spending spree to more than £150 million, pounds, beating all the other Premier League clubs. Manchester United finally signed Daily Blind for £14 million pounds as Louis van Gaal makes moves to sort out the defensive unrest at Old Trafford. It means Van Gaal has now parted with more than £160 million pounds this summer, almost as much as the club have spent in total over the previous five years, with Radamel Falcao already in on loan from Monaco. Blind, the son of former Ajax captain Danny, was a key player in Holland's run in the World Cup semi-finals under Van Gaal and understands the back three system which the team are currently struggling despite the clean sheet at Burnley this weekend. Arsene Wenger has made a dramatic move to solve his lack of goal power by agreeing a £16 million deal to sign England striker Danny Welbeck. The Arsenal manager, who was in Italy to keep a promise to play in a fundraising football match, still made sure that charity began at home as he helped beat off a bid from Spurs to land the Manchester United star. Welbeck told he could leave Old Trafford after failing to impress Louis van Gaal since the Dutchman's arrival this summer was originally offered on a season-long loan deal for a bargain of £3 million. Meanwhile, Manchester City left themselves with only three senior strikers to defend their Barclays Premier League title after selling Alvaro Negredo to Valencia. The Spanish club agreed a loan deal for the 29-year-old and confirmed they plan to trigger a £23.8 million pound release clause in his City contract next summer. Negredo, who cost City £20 million pounds when he arrived from Sevilla a year ago, began last season with 12 goals in his first 20 appearances, but began to struggle and started only three Premier League games after January. Come on, Joel. You should have showed us Falcao videos at least. We want to see him score goals. Man United want to see that. Man United signed right there Falcao from Monaco and is a prolific striker. Joel should have done that. That's it on NTV at 1, but we will get probably uh, pictures and graphics of Falcao coming up on Omomoli. David Romansi, Alan Darin and Dennis are in uh, for the next sports show. That's it on NTV at 1. Enjoy your afternoon.